Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The ancients said that Antarctica is a circle, or ring of mountains, ice and snow around the Earth. The Antarctic was called the end of the Earth. The Bible references ends of the Earth, the ends of the world, the boundaries of the Earth, more than 70 times. It also mentions a number of strangely specific things that were later confirmed in scientific exploration. In Psalm 135 verse 7, it says, He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, he makes lightning for the rain, he brings wind out of his treasuries. This verse is one of many that mentions ends of the earth. It alludes to vapors ascending, lightning, rain and winds, originating from there. Do vapors in fact ascend from Antarctica? Yes. The following is a Guardian article, entitled, This, is in addition to 47 already known about, an eruption would melt more ice in regions affected by climate change. This is an image of an Antarctic volcano eruption, from a news article titled Satellite Captured Active Volcano Near Antarctica. Another one, from an article titled Active Volcano, Discovered Under Glacier in Antarctica. Let's look at that Bible verse again. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, he makes lightning for the rain, he brings wind out of his treasuries. Is Antarctica in fact a storehouse of wind? Yes. A quick online search reveals that it is in fact the windiest place on earth. This is from the ancient apocryphal Book of Enoch, Book of Watchers Chapter 18. I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth and I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the earth and the firmament of the heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of the heaven. I saw the winds of heaven which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of the angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The ends of the earth, by the way, are frequently referred to as treasuries or storehouses in ancient texts. For example, in Job 38 verse 22, it says, Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Is Antarctica in fact a treasury of snow? Yes. Here's another interesting verse, Psalm 65, verse 5 to 7. O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea, which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. In this verse we learn three things about the ends of the earth. 1. They are afar off upon the sea. 2. They have strong mountains. 3. They are silent and the waves are settled. Is Antarctica in fact far off upon the sea? Yes. Does Antarctica have strong mountains? Yes. It is the highest place on Earth. Are the waves settled in Antarctica? Is it silent there? Yes. Travelers routinely reported that the sea is rough and noisy on the way to Antarctica, but once arrived, the ocean goes silent and peaceful. If you input Antarctica into any search engine, you'll find pictures like these. For mountains to reflect in the water, the water must be completely still. Knowing these scientific facts, let's look at the ancient verse again. O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. How did the ancients know that the waves become silent at the ends of the earth? 
Why do they become silent despite Antarctica having the strongest winds in the world? How did they know about the winds? The mountains. The snow and ice. The ancient verses are so accurate, we have to take whatever else they say about the nature of Earth seriously as well. They say, for example, that our world has boundaries. Psalm 74, verse 17. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Job 26, verse 10. He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. Acts 17, verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. 1 Samuel 2, verse 8. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. What if our world does in fact have boundaries that a normal human being can't cross? But that's absurd, we know that people have crossed the Antarctic on foot, on sleds, by airplane, with submarines. We know they've sent rockets to the moon. Okay, fair enough. Do you know anyone personally who has done one of these things? Or is this stuff you saw happening on TV? When I've talked about these Bible verses and their confirmation in modern discovery, 99% are unfamiliar with both the verses and the science. That tells me that neither schools nor churches are doing their job properly. The things that most matter to the nature of being, the nature of this world, are rarely discussed or featured anywhere. That needs to change. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.